Sixth grade students from Vista Middle School arrive by bus to the Mesilla Valley Bosque State Park, just southwest of Las Cruces. It looks like an ordinary field trip, but on this day these middle schoolers are more than students, they're scientists too. They're here as part of the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program, run in partnership by the University of New Mexico and Albuquerque's Bosque School. Bosque is Spanish for forest. Since 1997, the program has used volunteers known as citizen scientists to track ecological conditions along the Rio Grande watershed. Las Cruces area students have been gathering data on precipitation, plant debris, and groundwater levels at the state park monthly since 2011. The information is sent back to researchers in Albuquerque for analysis and goes into an online database for anyone to use. Vista Middle Science teacher Ruby Estrada says the goal is to teach students how to properly conduct research while experiencing nature. Sixth graders are creative and they're very social. So one thing that I love to integrate is hands-on and outdoor education. And that's what this community science allows us to do. Citizen science is primarily outdoors, of course. And so being able to have funding to bring students out to the Bosque monthly, a different class every month, um, gets these kids to be able to understand that they're not collecting data uh, for no apparent reason, but they're, they're contributing to an actual database that people tap into over time. Citing political reasons, Estrada uses the term community science rather than citizen science to be more inclusive of students and their families who may not be U.S. citizens. While in the Bosque, she instructs her students to leave no trace of their visit. The class drops a water level reader down an irrigation ditch and several wells to measure groundwater levels. The sensor didn't work this trip, but there was plenty more to record. For example, the amount of leaf litter that falls into labeled rubber tubs scattered throughout the park. Anytime you've got uh, plants uh, that are dying off, um, they're going to leave some litter and that becomes fuel load if there's ever a fire. You know, so knowing the fuel load and at these different research sites gives us an, an idea of what kind of fuel load is along the Rio Grande's right, uh, riparian area. 11-year-old Jocelyn Alayo takes notes on a clipboard to record her classmates' findings. Alayo says she loves science, but hadn't heard about community science until she took Estrada's class. She says it was fun discovering what was inside the containers. There was like roly polies, like different types of bugs, insects in there. And there was also like different types of leaves and like she was explaining to us like the leaves like were falling and they like they tell us like how much leaves there is like per year. It was actually pretty cool because all that data is is like going to be sent to Albuquerque. A nature and animal lover, 11-year-old Diego Mota says he's learned there's more to observing the environment than hiking in the woods. Mota operated a digital weather meter to test for indicators like temperature, humidity, and wind speed. I've learned that it's important to know some of this stuff, and I learned that I learned tools that I didn't know about before and how to use them. And I learned that hiking and like exploring isn't just about just seeing nature. It's about using tools that tell you what's going on in your environment, basically. Mota says kids can also further scientific research by noticing what adults might miss, like finding a dead crawdad in the brush. While they use modern instruments, Estrada says it's important that students learn to do science using basic skills and everyday materials. That involves reading maps or fishing arthropods out of pitfall traps made from plywood, screws, and plastic cups. Being able to use everyday uh, materials to, to do scientific research with is also important because people sometimes think that it's only technology and we do have that, you know, more sophisticated technology that they can play with and, and do actual science with. It's also important to let them know that you can do research, you know, using uh, solo cups, <laughs> plastic solo cups to, to catch arthropods and and gather data from. By simplifying science through nature, Estrada says she hopes students leave the bosque learning not only the scientific method, but that science is something attainable. That's key as efforts have increased in recent years to recruit more students, specifically girls, into science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM fields. Girls like Alayo, who says she thinks the experience will inspire more girls to pursue scientific careers. Boys can do as much as we can do. Girls can do as much as boys can do. It's like, um, I, I like it and I, this might be what I want to do, 
but at the same time I think sometimes like boys like are like the ones that like do all the outside stuff and like they get to like explore more than girls because usually girls really don't like that stuff but I think I think more girls are going to be interested in this because of this today. Regardless of gender or age, scientific progress thrives on each person's ability to be lifelong learners. For KRWG Public Media, I'm Michael Hernandez.